Yo, what's up? In this video, I will walk you through step by step running Deep Void IF. First, what is it? Stability AI just released its brand new open source text to image generator called Deep Void IF. It is a remarkable model that is crazily good at handling text generation. It can produce photorealism in high resolution images that outperforms Stable Diffusion, DAO E2, and other state of the art AI image generation tools. And what's more crazy is that you can run it completely free on a free tier Google Colab account. Let's dive in. All right. Before we jump into the Google Colab, I just want to take a very quick look at their website. Uh, look at the introduction they put together here. I think it's pretty clear, a very good reference. I will also leave a link in the description below. So here is the introduction. It is built with uh, multiple neural models. And what it does is that it kicks off with a base model that produces a relatively low resolution samples. And then you can upscale it. It will feed it through some upscaling models. It can eventually produce very high resolution images. What it does particularly well is writing text. Some of you might know that to image generation usually have problems with generating texts super accurately, but this is a very good model that uh, can generate text with a very high success rate. We will, of course, try to generate some text in the Google Colab, and you can see some examples. Here, it shows you a graphical representation of the process, feed the text into this text-to-image diffusion model. First, it spits out a 64 by 64 smaller image, and then afterwards, it will run through two different super resolution diffusion model and scale it up eventually to 1024 by 1024, which is, I think, HD resolution. And the crazy thing is that you can do that completely for free. I think even if you run it locally, it will not cost that much. The hardware requirements for these are not super high. And then here you can look at some examples and what makes it better. It claims to be better than the Imagine by Google as well as the Stable Diffusion. So yeah, so that's really kind of a big deal. And over here, you can see some more examples. It does generate text pretty well, and you can also do style variations. And of course, we will also take a quick look at that in Google Colab. Yeah, here, this image I thought would sum it up of the comparisons between different text-to-image generation model and Deep Floyd IF. So as you can see, I think these things are usually pretty subjective, but I think one thing stood out to me is that this hand image. So on the left is the Dell E2 model, and on the right is the Deep Void IF. As you can see, this two hands generated by Dell E looks a bit weird, and I think it's missing fingers or making the hands machine together, but the Deep Void IF does generate an uh, accurate description of a hand. So. Yeah, you can, again, you can take a closer look. I will leave, leave the link down below. And without further ado, let's get into Google Colab. Okay, so first is, of course, uh, you will need to go to their Deep Floyd IF GitHub official page. I will leave a link in the description. Over here at the quick start portion, you can open this in Colab or you can also open this in Hugging Face. They have a simple graphical interface where you can try it out. This does not really give you the ability to generate high resolution images, but it is, uh, you can try it. It's very simple. You don't need to do anything to set it up. Of course, we will just go into Google Colab. And if I click on the link, it will open up here. All right. Once you open up this web page, you will be looking at the deployed Google Colab page. I will walk you through it. And by the end of this video, you should be able to generate your own custom high res images from text. Google Colab, if you don't know about it, is essentially a Jupyter notebook hosted on the cloud, making it convenient for all your data science and machine learning needs. Deep Floyd offers this code through Google Colab so we can generate custom images through text. Of course, you can go ahead and read through the introduction and optimization parts yourself. We're going to skip through them and come to the available resources directly. As I said, we're using a free Google Colab account, and by default, it comes with 13 gigabyte of CPU RAM and 15 gigabyte of GPU RAM. So just go ahead and run these two cells. Check this. And it's essentially just going to tell you how much 
resources is available in your system. If you are a tech-savvy person, you can probably just open this file and run through it yourself. But for the rest of us, it might still be intimidating. So that's why I want to make this video to show you step by step. So the next step is going to be install dependencies. As shown here in this next code cell, we will run it after. So you can see it's starting to install the dependencies. Okay, so once the dependencies are installed, here is the part that's very important, accepting the license. So you will need to have a Hugging Face account. If you don't have one, click on this link, go ahead and register for an account. Hugging Face is a community and data science platform that provides tools for users to build and deploy ML models. So it is becoming very much popular. The next step is click on this next link to accept the licenses. So you have to log into your account and I already have accepted the uh, terms. You haven't, go ahead and read through the license terms and accept. Next one is to install Hugging Face Hub Upgrade. So it's essentially going to install this and upgrade to the latest version. Once that's installed, we can run the login. Okay, so here it asks you to provide the token to log in. So if you want to access to your token, you just open this link. And in your account, you should have a user access token. You can just copy this and come back here to paste it. Okay, now we see we have successfully logged in. We can go on to the next part. This is the text to image generation part. And first, we're going to load the text encoder. And so run this file. Okay, it's, we can see it's doing its job. It's going to give you some warnings, but you can ignore it. Okay, this one is done, and next we can start to create text embedding. Again, just run through the cell and wait for it to finish. Okay, once that's done, we come to the fun part. We can input our prompts here. So by default, it gives a prompt. If you're just testing out, you can play it, but if you want, you can also put in your own. So I'm just going to create an image for this channel and have it write the text of BruteFab. So I'm going to copy into my own prompt. You can customize your own, yourself. So my prompt is a large, long, neon light sculpture that writes BruteFab in a modern sans serif front, growing amidst, of, uh, amidst the decay of an abundant factory in the style of Dan Flavin. Okay, so I'm just going to run my prompt, run it through the T5 model. Okay, once that's done, we can free the memory flush around this. Okay, so next part is the main diffusion process. This is going to generate the small image. Okay, once that's done, we can define a random generator and run the stage one diffusion process. All right, this is the exciting part. Let's see the output of our result. Okay, as we can see, it kind of generated a brute web image and I think I'm okay with that. If you see kind of your thing is not very accurate, you can rerun the cells and let it regenerate an image. But I think I'm pretty happy with the result and I'm just going to keep running. Okay, so um, the next step is to upscale the images, the rest from this, this tiny image to a 256 by 256 image. Okay and run this, run this pipeline. Okay, so next is to see the results. This is the default uh, image they had, the example, so we can just see our image. Okay, as you can see, it generates the brute fab with the correct spelling. Yeah, it's accurate to the description. Flush it, and just keep running through the stage three, which is upscaled even further from 256 to 1024, which is HD. Okay, once we run that pipeline, we can here again run through the generator. Okay, so over here is the applying uh, water marker. I'm actually going to see if I can skip this step. So basically this will place a water marker on the right corner. We can see if we can just skip that step and output the image directly. Okay, yeah, as you can see, it did created the image in you know, HD resolution with accurate spelling. So from here, you can save this image. Uh, I'm going to save it on my desktop. Just 
called this. Okay, save it. And yeah, we will check that out right now. Yeah, as you can see on my desktop, here is the image that's saved. Let's open this up and see. It generated a PNG file. I'm pretty happy with the result. I think I can use this on my YouTube banner. Okay. Next, there are some other things we can check out. Here is the image variation, so we can actually change the style of the image. Let's run through. So what we will do is we will just go to a free image hosting site and have our image we just generated hosted there so we can get a free link. I will leave the link to this website in the description. So we will just copy this direct link and come back to our file, paste it here. Okay, we will run this cell. Here we will display the image we just generated. Okay, so one thing you can do is you can change the resolution here. So by default, I used this number, but we will change it to a square maybe. Okay, so that looks good. I think you can also resize it to other sizes, but we will just go with 768. Next is the text encoder. We need to load it again. So this part is just change the style of the image. If I haven't talked about it, that's the purpose of this. So we can change it to different styles. Okay, once the encoder is loaded, we will again import the pipeline. This is the image to image pipeline. Okay, by default, this is change the image to anime style. I think I'm okay with that. Just run through it and see what it will do. As before, we created, we create the text embeddings with T5, remove the pointers and free up the memory. Okay. Let's just run the pipeline. Okay. Then run the generator. Okay. The next is to view the small step. Okay. As you can see, it changed it to a uh, anime style, but I think it also changed the text as well. So let's Again, flush the memory again and upscale the image. Let's view this image. As you can see, it did change the image to uh, anime style. That's pretty fun. We need to flush it again. Of course, by now you can also download this, uh, this image and save it somewhere. But what I don't like is that it changed the name of this image to from bootfab to Amy. Next step, we're actually going to try to change that back to BruteFab, which is number three, the in-painting. So this step is able to change the part of the text in the image. Like you can see, it gives an example with this assignment, and then it can apply a mask in the end. It was able to change the text inside over there. So we're gonna just try to do the same but with our own image again like i said i'm not really super happy with this text inside so i think let's just download this image and i'm going to save it as enemy okay we need to do the upload again let's go back to here and we will upload the anime photo we just generated earlier okay so again we're going to copy this direct link paste it over here. Okay, so here we're going to, because we have a square photo, so we're going to change this to a square photo. Right. Oh, I didn't run this. Okay, I'm going to run this and change it. Okay, as you can see, this is loaded. And over here, we will apply a mask to the sign so we can replace this text. By default, this has a mask for the older image, but we will create our own mask. I have just created a mask image in Photoshop, uh, 512 by 512, and the mask corresponds to the image we have generated before. So we will be using this mask and try to replace the text. So to do that, we need to host our image on a database in Hugging Face. We will go to our Hugging Face account we need to create a new database dataset. The name, I will name it DeepFlow. License, oh, no, public, okay. So I will create a dataset 
And what I will do is I will upload the image to this data set. So go to files and I'm going to add file, upload, and just upload the mask image I created earlier. Okay. So just commit change. This works very much like GitHub. Okay, once we have this image uploaded, we will go back and change the name over here. By default, it's loading from diffusers, docs, images, and uh, we will change it to our dataset. So we'll copy this, paste it over here. Repo type is dataset, and the file name is mask.png. So, okay, once we have that changed, we can run this. And as you can see, it has loaded the mask we created. Okay, now it's the fun part. We can just run it and see what it does. Okay, so next. We now need to put in the prompt. We will leave the, the text command and change this to bootfab because I want it to say bootfab. We can see if it does it correctly. Free up. Okay, that's finished and great. Run the pipeline. So let's see the results. Okay, I'm not sure it did what we asked for. Uh, but as you can see, it definitely changed the text inside. I think it's, it might be because the image we gave is not like a perfect image for this type of task because the text is not as clear as the example they gave. So let's just see what it did. It definitely did something, but it added an extra U in the image. But overall, I think it's not bad and it's relatively accurate. I think if I want, I can go back and regenerate the image and maybe it will do a better job. But overall, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the result. I hope you go ahead and give it a try. Leave the comments below. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I think that's all for this video. Okay, that's it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Until next time, peace out.